What's up guys, Thomas here with another YouTube tutorial. Today I want to talk about digital watercolor brushes. If you guys haven't heard of Kyle T. Webster, he is an amazing illustrator that makes some of the best brushes out there. No, this isn't an ad for him. I just really like his uh, brushes and I use them all the time. They're super fun. He's got a variety of different brushes. You can get them in his mega pack for just 15 bucks. But what I want to talk about today is his watercolor brushes. I bought these a while back and I figured it was about time to make a video on them and just experiment with them a little bit. So I want to show you guys some of my process and some of my thinking that goes into using these digital watercolor brushes. So first things first, what we're gonna do is go to where to find the brushes, and after you've loaded them up, you can click the tab up here in the tools presets, and you'll see in the drop down menu, a bunch of brushes that he's preloaded there for all the watercolor ones. So you can go there, pick any of the brushes, and you'll see a lot of them are set to multiply, so that when you draw one stroke on top of another, they will blend just like real watercolor. So you can go here, experiment with all these brushes. There's so many options. And I would say pick a few brushes that work for you and that you like a lot and use those on a painting and then keep experimenting with all the others and introduce new ones as you go along. The first brush I found that I liked was Brutus and I found a few others that I liked as well that I'm using in this painting. I'll leave them on the screen right here. And if you want, you guys can get Kyle's watercolor brushes and test them out for yourself. If you wanna learn more about Kyle's brushes and setup, you guys can go to his YouTube channel and check out his videos, as well as his website has all the information and uh, all the brushes available to buy there. Okay, let's jump into this painting. So the first thing I'm doing is drawing out a quick outline in just shapes, thinking of a tree as kind of general trapezoidal shapes, trying to break them down into masses and think about the overall shape first before going into details. Then I'm gonna go around and do the edge outline of the tree. And the way I wanna do this is kind of inspired by Kazuo Oga and how he does a line drawing and he's able to, you know, watercolor on top of that pencil and it kind of bleeds all together to create this beautiful image. In this case, I'm trying to find my composition, how the tree is gonna twist and turn, does it have depth, how are the branches and the trunk of the tree gonna have mass and, you know, how do you show that wraparound form of the roots and the trunk all twisting around together. I've also put in some background elements like uh, two figures uh, with a campfire around them and the smoke's coming off the screen to the left side. So I think that this is all gonna create a nice balance both with the lean and composition from the smoke and the tree trunk. And then with the color separation, those two compositional elements are gonna get a little bit more muted once I introduce the background. A lot of people ask me about how I choose my colors. When you're picking colors, you don't wanna to go to the standard out of the can paint color. So like if you have like a bright, bright green that's like fresh out of the tube, it looks kind of scary and we can kind of see that it's like a pre-mixed color. In the case of my digital artwork, I do the same thing. So I don't pick a straight up lime green or some bright, crazy color. I started with a light yellow ochre, so it's almost desaturated in a way, so it's muted. And then for the shadows, I'm gonna introduce a richer sage green. So these are two different kinds of green, right? They're both green at the base, but one has more yellow in it and one has more blue in it. And these two things are gonna play off each other. You're gonna wanna keep that in mind as you go throughout your watercolor painting. So you can bounce between these two colors over and over again. You'll see that I'll introduce other shades of green as well, but these are gonna be my two primary ones. The yellow green for the light side and the sage green for the shadow side of the main masses of the tree. For the trunk, I'm layering multiple colors of watercolor. It's kind of light blue, light gray, and these two things are kind of mixing to create this brown, and I'm gonna paint over it continually sometimes adjusting with the multiplied watercolor brushes, and other times if I don't get the color I want, I'll just color pick and put a flat normal layer to correct it. You can see I've lightened up my line drawing so I can see underneath it and rely more on the color and the edges to unify everything that's going on. So I don't wanna rely on the line drawing so much that my colors get washed out. I wanna be able to keep those leaf edges on the tree 
sharp and distinct off the background. And I'm going to do that by putting in a background that is on white. So instead of just using the white of the paper, I'm also going to use the white of a cloud as the background element to put this silhouette of a tree on and so that it reads clearly. Right now my values are all in a middle range and some are going darker, some are going lighter, but I'm not going to pure black or pure white so that I can keep all my colors within the same value range and adjust later. You'll see here I'm doing a lot of refinement on the edges, introducing more shadows to the areas that I thought would push back in space and that are covered behind the tree leaves that are coming to the foreground. So we've got two elements, right? Again, the masses of this tree leaves one in front of another, and it's almost like imagining boxes one in front of another or spheres one in front of another, and the shadows that are created are a result of me lighting it from the top right side at about, I'd say 10 o'clock, and maybe a little bit towards the foreground. So next up, I'm gonna work on some of the lake, the foreground element that's in this frame, and I'm laying a yellow base just because it kind of plays off the yellow of the leaves on the tree, but then I'm gonna cover it with a light blue. And some of that yellow is still gonna seep through, and this is something I like doing a lot, putting two complementary colors down next to each other and having them vibrate against each other. And even though I'm covering up most of it, that 10% that's gonna show through is gonna create visual interest from a color perspective. What I also love about Kyle's watercolor brushes is that they're able to mass one on top of another when you're brushing back and forth. That multiply effect is creating some really cool, almost porous watercolor paper texture feels that I really can't explain unless we zoom in and look at some of these details. And what's cool about it is that the color's mixing well, the textures are mixing well, and by switching between brushes, you can get different edge effects. You can get bleeding edge textures, you can get soft washes, and you can even get sharp, accurate strokes that still have that multiply effect. And what's cool is you can also use your own brushes, but keeping Kyle's effects on, and then you can paint with your own brushes using these same effects. So if there's something that you really like, let's say the form of a brush you have in your Photoshop set, you can use these same watercolor effects and see what it does. Overall, I'm trying to get variation both in the form of the leaves. So we've got sharper blades of grass that are sticking up near the roots. We've got different kind of almost like pine textures going on in the background trees. And then we've got color variation as well. So you'll see that sage green, you'll see that yellow green. You'll also see a deeper blue green towards the back in the pines. And all of these variations are what's going to create interest and create an overall image that's satisfying to your viewer. One of the last details I'm going to add is working on the figures a little bit more, just to indicate and imply, not necessarily to render them out and put faces and details on them. And I'm also going to just drop some smidges of color for flowers all around them. So we've got purple, yellow, red, and these aren't going to necessarily read from a distance but they are gonna read as a nice little pop when you get closer up. That about wraps it up. Again, if you guys wanna buy Kyle's brushes, I highly encourage them. Uh, I use them in a lot of these warm-up paintings that I've been doing, and I enjoy them immensely. I think they're great for practice, and I think they're great at mimicking the traditional techniques that they're built for. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will get to you as soon as possible. And if you guys want to see any specifics in the future, please leave it in the comments. I'm always looking for new video ideas. Leave a like or share this video with your friends if you guys want them to find out about some new digital watercolor brushes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.